gorgeous. Hello, darling. It is Tuesday. It's time for another Tune Up Tuesday. I am Bex, your host, and today we are tuning your heart to the frequency of love so that you may radiate and attract the love and everything else that your beautiful heart desires. So welcome to another Tune Up Tuesday. Today we're talking about how to stay high vibration in your love life and beyond when you're not getting the results that you desire. Oh, it's like the manifestor's nightmare. Hello, hey, welcome, welcome. Ah, uh, the manifestor's nightmare. We have the vision, we know what we want, we've turned our thoughts and, and our ways of being and our actions into the direction of, yes, I'm attracting my man, or yes, I'm generating more abundance and generating more financial clarity and success and, and then we wake up the next day and it's like the same old, same old, same old, same old down over here. This is the vision and this is the same old, same old. Oh my God. Give me a little love, a heart or comment in the box below. If you know this feeling of feeling like we know where we want to go, we've got the vision really clear. We're in the steps We're in the process. We're doing all the things, but we're not getting the results that we want. Um, this is actually a question that came up uh, in my coaching community. Um, I've got a woman who's hot and heavy on the dating trail. She, I'm so proud of her. She is out there and she's dropping hankies and winking and like taking bold steps and, and being very open and receptive to receiving love. And she is also feeling like there's not a whole lot happening that <laughs> she's really thrilled with. So, um, how do we stay high vibration? What does that even mean? So I would love for you to drop your definition of vibration in the box below. Like what does being high vibration even mean to you? Um, to me, it means so many things, but one of them is being really open and in flow. And there's like this element of unattachment that goes along in my book with being high vibration. And what I mean by that is that, you know, we can hold this vision, we can hold it and want it with all of our heart, want it more than anything else in the world. And at the same time, we can also hold it with an open hand instead of like that white knuckle grip that I talk about, but hold it in an open hand to allow room and space for God, the universe to work its magic on us and to deliver us something that is even more surprising and delighting than we could have ever conjured up in our own human imagination. So being high vibration, I want to make the distinction that this is really different than being positive all the time, you know, because this is also something that we hear and, and frankly, that's just humanly impossible to stay positive all the time. And in my book, being high vibration isn't even about positivity necessarily, more so than it is being in flow, acceptance, um, sometimes surrender, letting go, releasing, allowing, um, and, tr and there's also this element of being in trust and in faith of that, like ultimately our highest good is unfolding. Okay. So I've really, um, I'm really, really like into this idea of like high vibration, what it means, because again, in my book, it's not about being staying positive all the time. So what, what is it, you know, and I started making this list of what does it feel when we're out of high vibration, when we're in low vibration, um, you know, there's emotions that are attached to that, but there's also the experience. And these are the things that I think that we readily recognize in our life that if we're in these experiences of feeling depleted, of feeling stuck, of feeling lost, like confused, um, I wrote down uphill, right? The idea that everything is just this uphill battle, right? I mean, how many of you have used those words in your own life? It feels like an uphill battle. Um, stagnation, when we don't feel like forward momentum, when we don't feel even like backward moment, mm. when we feel just this stagnation. Like when you think, when I think of the word stagnation, I think of, um, 
I think of like swamp water, right? There's no, there's no influx of water, there's no outflux of water, the water just stays put and so algae grows and then you get mosquitoes and it's just this stagnant cesspool, right? And we can, we can definitely experience that in our life. Um, yeah, and this other thing that I wrote down was lack of momentum. And this is, so these are experiences that I speak with my community and I hear that these are experiences that come from my community and I wanted to just speak into them because these are all representative that our vibration is off, that we're, we're feeling low vibration. Now here's the deal, there's nothing wrong with this. And I really just want you to hear that. There's nothing wrong with being low vibration because that is also part of the human experience. At the same time, when we're in high vibration, it's my belief that we're closer to God, we're closer to um, source, creation, we're closer to our own divinity, we're closer to our own creative capacity and our own ability to create what we desire in our life. So there's great benefit to being in high vibration, okay? And I've listed out three ways that you can bring yourself back into high vibration, all right? And I'd love to hear from you, which of these land, which of these would you love to try on, experiment with, and let me know how it goes, okay? So the first one is to narrow your focus back to the present. One of the things that really has us, like, just fucking hijacks us and has us slip out of high vibration is not being present. And what does that look like? It means, it, it looks like when we're, we're worried about the future, or when we're reliving or ruminating over the past, right? And these are two major sources of worry, fear, anxiety, all out low vibration experiences, low vibration emotions. So if you're noticing that you're really like hanging out in the future and really like tripped up over, am I doing it right? Am I gonna fuck up my future? Is this, is what I'm entering into right now, is that gonna have a cascade of like blah, 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 and like really close the door on opportunity or like whatever, your freight train brain is going full speed ahead towards, this is pulling you out of high vibration. Same thing with the past. Should I have done that? What if I, what if, the what if game is a slippery slope, my friend, um, but what if and, and, and should I have, or, you know, these questions of like, <sighs> the what if is like the mm. biggest one. It's like this gravitational black hole pulling it out of high vibration. So step one, or one step of, of three, these are not necessarily linear, but narrow your focus, come back to the present moment. And I'd love to hear from you, what are your favorite ways to come back to the present moment? For me, I've got a whole litany of them. Some of them I can do in five minutes, some of them take me five days, right? But one of them, the five minute practice, sometimes I'll just set a timer on my phone and I'll close my eyes and I'll sit and breathe with my hand over my heart for five minutes, literally. And I'll notice what I'm thinking, I'll notice what thought's coming up. I know, I'll notice if I'm gonna be getting pulled back into the future or if I'm getting pulled back into the past. And I'll love myself through it. And I'll be like, oh, look at that, there I go again. That is a slippery slope, what? And here's my breath again, and here's my heart, and ooh, I can feel my heart beat. So bring it back to, now you're focused, bring it back to the present moment, all right? Again, um, the present moment is what I believe is where all things are possible. The present moment is rich with abundance. The present moment is rich with gratitude, the possibility for gratitude, the possibility to come back to faith. The present moment is rich with synchronicity. I was out on a walk yesterday, I was leaving a message for a friend, and I literally was having this moment of gratitude in communicating with my friend and I was speaking about a friend who had passed away and I looked up and in that moment I saw a great blue heron fly across the sky and it was like, ah. I mean, great blue herons, big birds, birds of any kind really are uh, just signs and symbols of the universe for me. So for me, that was just an affirmation, a reward, uh, an abundant moment of being in the present. Um, Oh my God. And then I crossed the street and I rounded another corner and there was a like red tail hawk sitting on the tree, just like a cat, like looking at me like I was at dinner. I'm, like, I'm not your dinner. Anyway. Okay. Bring it back to the present moment. Okay. Um, oh God, this next one is huge, huge. Check your priorities and commitments. 
one of the things that like really yanks us out of high vibration is when we're doing things out of obligation or other questionable motivations. Like I'll tell you, I am a recovering <laughs> queen of FOMO, right? FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out. So how many of you out there have said yes when you really wanted to say no to something? But you said yes because you wanted to be in the room or you wanted to be with that group of people or you wanted to look good or, or this, that, the other, or you didn't want to miss the experience or uh, there was anxiety about missing out when really what you needed was something totally different. Okay, so check your priorities and commitments is really just an invitation for you to check your motivations for saying yes. Check your motivations for saying no. Check your motivations for doing the things that you do. And are they in alignment with what you hold dear in your life, with what you are working on creating, with what you are creating in your life? Are they in alignment? Or are they pulling you off course? Because when you're in you may not you may not feel it like up front, but then like five layers deep when you're in it and now you're obligated and then you got to be somewhere at a certain time when really what you need is something totally different. Sister, you are going to go down that slide of low vibration and that might look like a whole bunch of things. It might look like self beat up or um, embarrassment or shame or Oh, so many other low vibration emotions for, for not being present with your own needs, which spell out to, which then manifest into your, your, your priorities and your commitments. Okay. Um, <laughs> and of course I made a beautiful segue. I just can't even help myself. But this last piece that I've got here around how to, how do we stay in high vibration is really getting intimate with our needs. What do you need, sister friend? What do you need? Not only what do you need, what do you want too? That's another big one. But needs are really, really tricky and important. And one of the ways that I've been learning how to play with my needs in my own life is I work backwards <laughs> because, um, Hindsight is twenty twenty, right? And for me, it's easier to look back on a, an experience where I was feeling any of these depleted, stuck, lost, uphill, stagnation, lack of motivate, lack of momentum. Whenever I've felt those moments, I look back on those and I and I say, okay, what need of mine? What what needs did I have in that moment, and what needs were not being met? And for me, like I said, it's easier for me to look backwards so that I can build the muscle so that I can more readily identify my needs in the present moment. It's still practice. I'm learning. Um, but looking backwards and looking at a situation where needs were clearly not met, if you're able to bring yourself outside of the situation, again, climb up on your beach tower and look down on your life, like the lifeguard of your life, just non judgmentally, not in a punishing way, but just in an observing way and say, Hmm, what did I really need in that moment? What did I need from that person? Or what did I need from that situation? Was that need being met? And here's the thing about needs is that again, as we build that muscle, we start to build more confidence, and we're more able to ask for what we need in any given moment in real time, which is a skill that is, is not easy to, to, well, it's a skill that needs to be built, essentially. Um, and when we do, when we're able to ask for what we need in the moment, then there, again, there's that confidence that's built. There's this sense of empowerment that is built because we're asking for what we need. Oh my gosh. Talk about being in high vibration. Those two pieces, the confidence and the self empowerment, those elevate you up the ladder on, on high vibration in, like very quickly, let alone if those needs are being met. Oh my gosh. <laughs> more rungs up the ladder of high vibration. So I hope this has been super helpful for you. I know that it's a bit of a roller coaster ride out there when we're calling in our beloved and we feel like we're doing all the things, but you know, if you've been watching tune up Tuesday for a while and you've been following my work, you know that it's so much more about the doing 
and it's who we're being. So if you feel as though you're slipping out of high vibration, if you feel like it's difficult for you to maintain that high vibration, if you feel more low vibration than anything else, if you feel depleted, stuck, lost, like you're going uphill, you feel stagnation or lack of momentum, please leave me a comment in the box below or reach out directly. I would love to connect with you and support you however that makes sense. So I love you so much. Thanks for joining me for another Tune Up Tuesday. I'm here every Tuesday hanging out in Mexico and I love, love, love hearing from you. So if there's any question or situation or scenario in your life, whether it be in your love life, other relationships or beyond, shoot me a message. I would love to address your question on a Tune Up Tuesday. All right. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you back here next week. Bye. Finish!